Welcome back everyone! In today's video, we're diving deep into the initial configuration of Vim Backup for AWS. We'll cover everything you need to know to get started with this powerful backup solution. So let's get right in! This is the interface you'll see when you first deploy Vim Backup for AWS. To start setting up your backup environment, click on this configuration button on the top right, and it will take you to a configuration wizard, which will walk you through the entire configuration process step by step. The first step we need to configure is the IEM role. Since we've deployed Vim Backup for AWS with a CloudFormation template, it automatically created a default backup restore IEM role. However, if you deploy the product from an Amazon machine image, you need to manually assign a role with minimum permissions. Also, to backup and restore resources in other AWS accounts or specify custom IAM roles with granular permissions, you have to add these IAM roles to Vim Backup for AWS. I will post a link in the description below for a tutorial to add these roles. Even though it's not a best practice, I'll just use the default backup restore IAM role for this demo. So let's go back to the wizard. Our next step is to configure the workers. These workers are temporary instances that will perform the backups. They are spun up whenever they are needed and shut down when the job is done, which is fantastic for cost optimization since you only pay for the compute resources when you need them. To start, click on Add. Here, we choose the AWS region for which we want to configure our network settings. We need one worker per region where we have instances to protect. I'll pick North Virginia. Click Apply. Next, we'll choose the availability zone. You can pick whichever. Click Next. Now, we select the VPC to which we want to connect the worker instance. Click Apply. Then, a subnet and a security group which must have the 443 open in port 2022. Click Next. Finally, review the summary information and click Finish to complete the process. Let's go back to the wizard. In the final step, we need to create a repository to send our backups to. Click here and give it a name and a description if you want. Click Next. In this IAM role section, select an IAM role that has the necessary permissions in AWS to be able to create repositories. I'm going to leave the default backup restore role. You can also check the permissions to see if the role has the necessary permissions. Then, we need to specify an Amazon S3 bucket where we want to store our backups. So click Choose Bucket. Here are my buckets. Pay attention here that I've enabled S3 versioning and S3 logic log on this bucket because I'm going to make it immutable. So I'm going to pick this bucket. Apply. Next, you can choose whether to use an existing folder or create a new one within the selected bucket. Since it's our first setup and we shouldn't have any folders, we'll create one. Now here you can specify the storage class for the backup repository. I'm going to pick S3 standard, but you can choose S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive if you want to archive your backups for a longer period. Vim Backup for AWS also allows you to protect your backups from being deleted, encrypted, or modified by making the repository immutable. As you can see here, the immutability settings cannot be changed. This box is ticked because the bucket I chose had versioning and object lock enabled. So when you're creating your bucket, you have to enable bucket versioning and Enable Object Lock. Here you also have to acknowledge this. And then you create your bucket. If 
your bucket doesn't have versioning and object clock enabled, this will be disabled. Now click Next. Finally here, you can also enable encryption. I'm not going to turn it on. Next. Verify the summary if all the configuration settings are correct. You can also check the permission again. And if everything is good, you can click Finish. Once you have configured these three initial configuration steps, your appliance is ready to use. In our next video, we'll dive into creating backup policies and exploring more advanced features. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help you out. Bye!